Minor Dave rejoins the program. Now, uh, Minor Dave, uh, now your last name uh, is Everest. We've always known you as Minor Dave, but it's actually Minor Dave Everest, right? Yes, correct. All right, very good. So you have uh, been out in the Applegate for quite some time. You had a, um, a mining claim or have a mining claim. And which creek is it up on again? It, it's on Sturgis, but when they arrested me under the info, informational complaint, they uh, they made it uh, Car- uh, Carberry, which is uh, two miles down the road from me. Mm-hmm. But what I like to do before we get all started in this, yeah, I like to make a short little statement. Um, okay, as I am the keeper of the republic, I would like to thank all the miners and non-miners that showed up to my claim. I never felt more loved in my life, and I consider them all keepers. And as a keeper of the Republic, I'd rather live five minutes as a free man than a lifetime as a slave. And I, rather than getting into all the details of my case and boring everybody, yeah. I I want to explain why the Forest Service, why I think the Forest Service is coming after me. Basically, uh, have you heard of the, the monument they want to put in? Yes. Well, that monument, my claim's in the middle of it. And as me being where I'm at, if they can't force me out, they can't make the monument. My opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, actually, that makes a lot of sense, uh, Minor Dave. You're you're talking about the Siskiyou, the proposed Siskiyou Crest National Monument, which would lock up what was it about a half million acres, from what I understand? Yes, and it gets worse because see, uh, uh, the mining claim is a dominant estate, and if they can take it away from me, they can take everybody else's warranty deeds under the Kilo Act, under eminent domain, and whether you're on the inside of the monument or in the buffer zone that's 10 to 15 miles from the boundary line of the, of the, uh, of the monument. So under the Kilo decision, for the greater good, which I don't see where it would be at, but they can say for the greater good we can take everybody's land and give them peanuts for it. Mm-hmm. Well, in, in your particular case, they were giving you nothing. The uh, Forest yeah. Service just basically came to you and said, get the hell off. Isn't that right? Right. And they said that because I didn't ask them permission to mine or occupy or do any of the things I'm doing, because uh, it's not required under the law and it's kind of complicated. It's not meant for the radio. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, It is one of those things you can just get off in the weeds. But the yeah. 1872 Mining Act doesn't acknowledge having to uh, ask permission of the Forest Service no, to do a me- to have a mineral estate claim on Forest Service land. This is something which was uh, given to the people, not to the Forest Service. Is that pretty much the the thumbnail correct. sketch, the short version of it? Yes, correct. Because uh, the mining law is the authorization for doing whatever you do within the jurisdiction of the mining uh, of of your mining claim. Now, if Congress wishes to change that law, it certainly well, they got a problem because it's a trust. They can't change it. It's irrevocable. Oh, real? Oh, so it's irrevocable. They couldn't. No, they they'll, they yeah, might not be able to revoke existing claims, but they could probably find a way by changing the law to prohibit no, future. No, because they gave, they gave the land to everybody oh. that's a citizen, and everybody that's a citizen has the right to go in whether they choose to exercise it or not. And because it's a trust and a treaty, they'd have to negotiate any new compromises in the trust with the grantee. And the grantee, in this case, would be uh, Jefferson Mining District, the controlling legal authority. So Jefferson Mining District is the controlling legal authority of all of these yes, because these they're mines? a local government. By mm-hmm. the way, I didn't tell you last, the last time I talked to you, as I am uh, a legislator and, and uh, for lack of a better word, ambassador from Jefferson Mining District, I ent- I'm entitled to local immunity as long as I'm acting within the jurisdiction of my mi- of the mining law. Okay, are you telling me that the mining district, in your opinion, then, is um, is sovereign over the other governmental agencies yeah. there, that law enforcement couldn't show up, or that if a uh, uh, Forest Service agent uh, were to, to pop up? It's just an interesting theory if this is the case. I want to make sure I understand you. Well, the deal, the deal here is, it's not in my opinion, it's, uh, it's the opinion of uh, the state DEQ that recognized this as a local government. 
The DEQ recognized you. Okay. Yes, the, the hmm. state DEQ. Now, secondly, I didn't tell you last time because I, they in 2006 they gave miners national security priority, and so I uh, I sent a notice off to Homeland Security and an advisor to the state. It turned out to he be, was the National Guard commander, mm -hmm. and they did a full blown uh, 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 by the Oregon State Police criminal major crime unit and fraud unit and counterterrorism section, and they cleared me, mm -hmm. and they've read all my notices, and they found them to be true, correct, and credible. So, and the detective's name that told me that is Detective Der uh, Derek Schott out of Salem, which was down here investigating me. Okay, so you, you've you been cleared by the state then and had this background check done, but the Forest Service still came and arrested you. Can you explain why? And by the way, what day did they arrest you? It wasn't when everybody was showing me, up. They arrested me last Thursday between 4.30 and 5 o'clock in the evening mm -hmm. when everybody was gone and I was there by myself. I expected them on Wednesday, and I don't think the reason why they didn't come in on Sunday is they knew I was going to have a crowd there. Monday was a holiday, and Tuesday, the Secretary of Interior here and the Under Secretary of Agriculture was here, so they were a little busy with uh, uh um yeah they, they didn't want this uh they didn't want any distractions from uh, king salazar right, right. <laughs> okay oh so that's why so what happened when you were actually arrested what was it like i've never been arrested well they they they, they cuffed me they took me to the county jail where i reported to uh the intake deputy sheriff that i was kidnapped by the forest service that I was a local member of a local government and I had immunity mm -hmm. and I would like them to take a report for kidnapping. Of course, they looked at me like I was nuts and I passed it all the way up to the desk sergeant. They ignored me. The mm -hmm. next morning, the uh, uh, a U.S. Forest Service officer come and got me, chained me from head to toe and took me into the federal court system where he turned me over to the federal marshals. Oh, the okay. Now, now, hold on. W wait a minute. You were a minor, or are a minor, who already passed the Department of Homeland Security background checks. You have been investigated and, and, and cleared. They put you in full chains to take you to the federal court? It's the, it's the marshal services rules. Oh, oh okay. They're transporting marshals. Uh, uh, when the Forest Service explained to me that it's part of the... Uh, 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 the marshal services requirements that I have leg irons on, chained uh, to a belt uh, with my hands in front of me. Boy, some immune uh, government official you are. 